Oh, hi, I'm Dalton Gentry. Uh, no, okay. Shut up and sit down. Yeah. Okay. You uh, moving in? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, figured I'd give this a shot. Uh, Shut up, you're Pudge. Uh, Dalton, but it's a- uh, You're Pudge. Oh, okay, and you, you are? The Colonel. The Colonel? The Colonel! All right. Not um, like in a fried chicken way. No? Like a tactical sort of, I'm the token, short, poor, stocky, kind of standoffish guy. Okay, well, I, I, I can see, or I can see that. Shut up. I, why am I Pudge? Because I fucking said so, that's why. Okay. Because I fucking said so. Okay. Um, I, I, I was kind of hoping if we, we could be living here together, you might be able to find me a woman. Uh, maybe. I. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here with you for this week's book review. Dalton, what are we doing today? We are finally going to break our promise of staying away from young adult literature. And we have Looking for Alaska by John Green. Fan-fucking-tastic. Another opportunity for me to make enemies with you and BookTube at large. I have the entire internet on my side <laughs> with this one. We'll see. So, Looking for Alaska. What do you think, Adrian? Give me, uh, give, me, uh, give me some good things, give me some bad things. Well, we'll start with the quote. You want to start with the quote? We'll start with the All quote. All right. What do you got? Um, this is from the Colonel. Oh, that's ironic. On, that on page, the shut up. On page 10. The father's in California right now, maybe sitting in his lazy boy, maybe driving his truck. Either way, he's drinking. I think that tells us a lot about the character. Uh, it is a rare moment of insight in this novel. And my second quote is on page 172. She taught me everything I knew about crawfish and kissing and pink wine and poetry. She made me different. Those are perhaps the only two highlights from this oh, book. Oh, God, come on, come on. Okay, I got my, kind of a long one here, but a, it is a pretty big one from the book. A lot of people seem to agree with that. Uh, just like that, from 100 miles an hour to asleep in a nanosecond. I wanted so badly to lie next to her on the couch to wrap my arms around her and sleep. Not fuck, like in those movies. Not even have sex. Just sleep together in the most innocent sense of the phrase. But I lacked the courage and she had a boyfriend and I was gawky and she was gorgeous and I was hopelessly boring and she was endlessly fascinating. So I walked back to my room and collapsed on the bottom bunk thinking that if people were rain, I was drizzle and she was a hurricane. Come on, that's good. No, it's not. That is beautiful. You're allowed to think so. That is wonderful. You're, you're completely allowed to think and so. And the entire internet will agree with me on nope. this one. Okay. Uh, so um, it's, like, it's like Christopher Hitchens said about freedom of speech. If there is one dissenter about any topic, not only do you have to allow him to speak, but you have to give him special attention because if, if not for the reason that he may be right, at least for the reason that it makes you establish just cause on your own. Okay. Um, oh my. This what are your good things? What are your good things? This is going to be a battle. Good things. Uh, this is a realistic story. This seems like this could happen to anyone. There are elements of this that remind me of my upbringing. It reminds you of your first love. It's nice. Okay. It's nice. Uh, it's not a sunshine and rainbows love story. It's tragic. It's unexpected. It's not just the flawless hopeful, romantic right, thing, whatever. Right, it's very melodramatic. And Alaska, that's a good thing. Just Alaska? Just Alaska is a good thing because you have loved her since before you read this book. Clarify that, not you as in me, you as in general. Uh, you as in general okay. and you as in you and you and as in me. Okay. Don't tell me I'm wrong on that one. Okay. All right. Yeah, what do you got for me? Uh, my three good things. It's very easy to sit down and get into this world. Um, it seems like when you're between readings, you don't forget too much of what okay. happened. Um, the voyeurism. There's a scene where uh, Pudge and Alaska are going through different people's rooms, right? The voyeurism in there taps into something primal that makes you, that, that uh, takes you back to maybe adolescence. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you're trying to discover yourself through other people. 
And the third thing, literature references. It's always nice to have literature references. Yes, the so. quote of death. Right. Just wonderful. Bad things. Okay. The few that there are. Thank you very much. Right, right. Uh, this can be juvenile at times. Uh, the whole idea of the pranks, it just seems like it doesn't fit to me. It's juvenile. I don't enjoy it. So. Okay. Uh, I have the formatting, the countdown format. I don't like it because it seems like it just takes away from the novel itself. Okay. Uh, we're expecting something to be coming and therefore we get it. We're not just blindsided by it like we should have been. Uh, and we'll just plug it right now. We're going to spoil this whole book, so if you haven't read it, be ready for that. My final bad thing is the young adult genre in general, because this definitely falls into that category, and that's disappointing. Okay. I wish it wouldn't have. Um, my three bad things are there's a lot of posturing in this, even okay. for young adult fiction. The story just sort of wanders around. Uh, the best stories feel not they feel inevitable. The best stories feel inevitable. This story never feels inevitable. Um, and finally, find me a post-Alaska scene where it would be possible, possible, to pump in any more melodrama. Have you ever met a woman One from Alaska's age? I think back from to when you, 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 you were Alaska's age, right? Oh, I did. I, I did exactly. Tons of Alaska's. That's what it's I mean. all melodrama. It is. Yeah, but you you don't know. Here's the thing. It plays completely into melodrama. The whole story, not Alaska, not Alaska's part of the story. The entire book. Okay. First off, here's here's the first thing I want to say after we've done our little formula thing. Okay. How dare you? What? How dare you? Read Catcher in the Rye and say, well, you, you know, it's like Salinger Truck, uh, young adult fiction, and somehow made it worse. How dare you say that? And in the very turn of breath, made it worse. <sighs> Here's looking for Alaska. We should read it. First of all, I don't sound anything like that. That's, that's you. It's you. Even with the hands. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll give you the hands, but that, I don't sound anything like that. Second of all. Second of all. Second of all. This is a good book. This is a New York Times bestseller. This is a some kind of prize. Well, this is a uh, I can't read it. Yours is probably a little clearer than mine. Michael Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature, American Library Association. This is a prize-winning book. Congratulations. This is a book that is adored by millions of people. John Green is a major author. This is, I, I believe, his first book. I think you're right I about that. I think it that. is. I still don't care. Now, um, um, yeah. hold on. Let me, let me read you this from Rave Reviews for John Green. The spirit of Holden Caulfield lives on. Ooh, I actually just skipped over that too. <laughs> so let me, uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you my relationship with John Green to this point. <clears throat> I don't have those, by the way. That's why I didn't let me, see them. Let me put it in this fashion. You know when you've got the flu and you figure it out because, what are you doing? Listen to me. I'm listening, I'm listening. It's three o'clock in the morning and you wake up and something's wrong and you don't know what's wrong, but something's wrong. So you kick out of bed and you rush to the bathroom and you make it to the toilet just in time to throw up, right? Okay. Instinctively, you instinctively just pop out of bed and somehow time that 40 yard dash completely correctly, pop, <laughs> everywhere. Mm -hmm. That is my relationship with John Green. I have instinctively, instinctively, Walked right past him every time I went to the bookstore. Whenever someone was saying, you know, you gotta read this, um, the Fault in Our Stars? Fault in Our Stars. The yes. Fault in Our Stars. I gotta throw up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. Um, no, let, let me say this. I have read a lot of John Green. Uh, for Dr. Cadden's class when we did young adult literature, whatever it was called, I actually did my final paper on John Green's works. Uh, so I've read quite a few of them. I did you a favor by letting you read this one. How do you mean? Now, I'm not trying to be insulted of John Green because I know he's a major player in the young adult genre, but this is the best one. That's the Hands best Hands down. Okay. I mean, The Fault in Our Stars, eh. Abundance of Catherine's even more, eh. This is, this is what we should have read. Here's one thing that I would like to, to point out okay. about this novel. Does this novel feel edgy to you? Does it feel like it was going for the edge, you know? <sighs> just, just, just off the top of your head, does it? I'd say yes. Okay. How edgy is it for the tall, upper-middle-class white guy 
to fall in love with the curvy, upper middle class white girl. How edgy is that? Not edgy at all. Not edgy at all. Okay, not edgy. Not edgy. Uh, he was going for that. I think I think he was going for that. I'm not going to speak for him. But I think he was going for that. Seems to have failed miserably if you actually analyze what's going on. Uh, now, this is the first time you've read this, first time you've been introduced to John Green. Uh, this book was actually given to me by a former teacher when I was in high school. So I'd say maybe... Oh, cool teacher. Give freshman, me, sophomore give year. Give me a book about cigarettes and fuck. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but anyway, um, so... Reading it from that standpoint, yeah, I fell in love with this book when I first read it. Uh, it is a different read now, but it still is reminiscent of adolescence. I think that's a very important part of this, and maybe that's an important part of young adult literature that we haven't explored a lot lately because it's terrible. It reminds you of your youth. <laughs> you were going so well with the young adult crowd until you just said that. Well, hey, let's be honest. If they've made it this... You were the good guy. If they've made it this far, they deserve a slap in the face. <laughs> um, okay, I, I can see that. Okay. Here's the thing, though. I, I want to go back to one of my, my original um, criticisms off of what you just said. Even in young adult literature, like the word inevitable should feel inevitable. Let me go further with that. It should feel necessary but not predictable. Okay. That's how I would describe inevitable in stories. Was there anything about this that felt inevitable, that felt inevitable, that felt necessary but not predictable? I think it was inevitable to get the collapse of Alaska. Something had to happen. And maybe you only got that feeling because you had the countdown and from an educated reading standpoint, you realized she was a pinnacle character. Something had to happen. Right. I think, and I think he played this up that he was trying to make it seem like the countdown was losing his virginity. Maybe it was. Right. Uh, it, do, is that predictable, though? Did I, you know, say, oh, she's going to get, you know, in an accident. She's going to be essentially kill herself uh, through a drunk driving, blah, 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 you know, teen awareness video. Right. Um, did I predict that? No. Absolutely not. So was he correct in his writing to stray the reader like that? Yeah, he did good. I think that was a well done by you, John Green. Um, but was I still expecting an inevitable twist? Yes. Yeah. Because it's literally broken down into before and after. The one nice touch I thought the book had was it starts 163 days before and it ends 163 days after. Yes. Or 36. 63, 36, I don't remember. Uh, Doesn't matter. It's no. garbage. But, <laughs> um, here's the thing I want to ask you. Like, it, it, it becomes... The story comes to wrap around the idea of the prank. Yes. The story should come to wrap around an idea that feels inevitable, that feels okay. necessary, not predictable. For me, the prank was not that. For me, what would have been that is in a book called Looking for Alaska, we've got a mysterious death of Alaska. We have a character who is infatuated with biographies. Would it or would it not have been very interesting to read a story about a character becoming a biographer? If this were the second half, writing the biography of Alaska. Hey, possibly, yes. Because then you've already um, got a first person narrator. Yes. So then you go into this searching for her last words. And what you can do at that point is you've got the last words that she said to him. Mm -hmm. Those are the last known words she said. A lot of times biographies get away with using those as the last words, right? Yes. For all intents, for all purposes, those are the last words. So then your second half of the novel is searching for meaning and searching to complete Alaska, and you can leave us with Alaska's last words. Okay. I this see. doesn't do that. It's the great big prank, man. All right. And see, I will agree with you on that. The pranks are it's just ridiculous. And they, they happen too easily. It's filler. It, it, it's... No one struggles in this. No. Now, if you took the pranks away and you focused on the characters themselves, not just the ridiculousness of the pranks, I think you would have a stronger novel. Because, yes, this is uh, terribly romantic from an adolescent standpoint. There's tragedy. There's growth of character. There could be growth of character. I, I don't... While and whereas the characters are different after Alaska, I don't know that they grew. But I'm, I didn't mean okay. to interrupt you. Oh, you're fine. Uh, but it just seems like the pranks are overshadowing 
what would have been the better novel. Which which would have come through when you're writing Absolutely. that biography. It could have, yes. Um, and I think the reason, the reason that we could not have gotten that novel is there are quotes, like, like the one you, you picked for your quote yeah. of the week, that feel very hard like they're trying to be David Foster Wallace. They're and trying to be good quotes? When you're trying very hard to be someone else, you're not going to be true to your characters. Okay. Uh, so for me, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't work either. Now, how do you feel, just off topic here, since we're on characters, though, about the nicknames? I mean, I'm, I'm for them, I guess. I'd... I mean, I support them completely because, yeah, we have the full character names. It gives you the basis for the novel. But we also have the nicknames, so you begin to associate with other people. Currently. Right. Uh, we, we, we start the novel with their slave names, right? <laughs> and then we, we come into their actual, their actual being. I, their I, actual just, I really wanted to make a point to call you the Colonel. That's all uh, I no. wanted to do with my life. Uh, if you've read this, ladies and gentlemen, coming in next year, the Colonel on the silver screen. It says right here you're a son of a bitch. Oh, does it? Look yeah. at that. Uh, I had that in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> but I... I I don't know how to argue with this one with you. I think it was... This is your novel! I think it was good. I enjoyed it. Well, put that into words. It, it was a good novel. It was enjoyable. If we had to read Young Adult, I think this was the one we needed to take. Correct? Would you have... You've, have you read Twilight? I have, I have not read Twilight. Okay, so the young adult genre is not John Green and Twilight. No, it's not. No it's not. Not. No, it's not. no, it's not. No, it's not. I, I have read young adult. Um, um, How do you find the young, young adult genre, though, besides teenage angst and high fantasy? Feed by M.T. Anderson. I've mentioned it before on the channel. Was I took young adult fiction with Cadden, too. Did we have that class together? I think we may have. We may have. Um, we have not been friends for long, um, <laughs> but M.T. Um, Anderson feed, you, you mix in a little bit of something different, you put some humor in there that is not forced humor, that is not, who, who in here has their own sense of humor, their own brand of speaking? Okay. Um, I, I don't know, I, like, I don't want to sit here and just trash a novel, but I got nothing out of this. Nothing at all? Nothing out of this. Now, I will say there are some major weak points. The whole uh, just drunk driving seems propaganda almost. It does. This well, is an after-school special. I, I, I mean, I don't know that it's safe to say that when your entire novel is also predicated upon seeing the merits of cigarettes. Yeah. Right? So it's hard for me to really say that it's propaganda but it plays out like an after school special yeah well honest. well it 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 feels like poorly thought out propaganda <laughs> it feels like it what it feels like is and i'm going to i'm going to get myself in trouble by saying this it's like saying jews are all right but those damn black people you know what i'm saying like is that type of propaganda oh alcohol is bad but the cigarettes, man. They're well, without them. everybody needs a smoke. Right? Everybody like, like needs a smoke. It's like anti-racism propaganda by putting down a different race. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that seems a little off to me. The pranks just seem juvenile and ridiculous and like they're just filler. And I, I, I still enjoy it, though. If the point of a novel is to escape reality... Yeah, but I this was is developed in this story. But this is very grounded in reality, down it to is. the fact that all of your characters are angsty teenagers who have no real sense of humor and like to make boob jokes, right? I mean, there's no... What is there? I, I, that's the thing. And maybe it just transports, you know, myself as the reader back to my adolescence. You know, the first time you actually tried a cigarette, the first time you were sneaking alcohol. Yeah, you fall in love with that because that's nostalgic to you. And I've made that point many times when I've read books and I've suggested books that we should reread because I read them a long time ago. This particular story escapes from that reality of what I am now paying the bills, having to live and exist, to that innocence of youth. So do you believe that if, if this book were about the discovery of pornography, it would have the same effects on you? I think you could absolutely say that could be an element of this story and it would feel completely natural and normal okay you know one thing that did not feel natural and or normal what's that the scene where alaska is announced as dead yeah 
the entire school loses it? Yeah. Apparently Alaska is only in the small clique of friends anyway. No, 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 no. I want to make a point here. I'm going to grandstand because my eighth grade year, I had a classmate die. My freshman year, someone in my high school got stabbed to death walking home three blocks from campus. Sophomore, junior, senior year, a, a classmate died. The year after I got out of school, I had a, a friend who had committed suicide. Um, even, even the, the last, for me, the last one, the, the suit, that was a little bit, that was a little, that was harder th than the other ones. But that scene never happened. Through six years of, of being in school and having someone in that school die, that scene never happened. I'm going to have to disagree. The only few experiences that I had in my educational experience where a classmate died, tragic as it is, truly tragic, yeah. that someone in their youth would have to it would die. It seemed like people came out of the woodworks to be upset. People forced themselves to be upset because that's what they were supposed to do. Right, that, I mean, that's teen angst. That's yes. not what I'm arguing with. So that, it, it seems normal the way they reacted to me. N what I'm arguing with is the very gymnasium scene mm -hmm. that was just an explosion of everyone yelling and crying. <laughs> it did Darth Vader, you didn't know. Right. For about five pages, right, wasn't yes. it? Yeah, it was, it was lengthy. It was a considerable it was scene lengthy. Of, of just people losing their shit. And it, it did not feel, it didn't, you, you don't get real emotion in there because all you have is this knockoff wannabe Holden Caulfield walking around looking at other people as they cry. Like, that's literally what the scene is. He, he runs outside and yells as he kicks in the trash can or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly what happened there. But... <laughs> I see, that's the thing, though. I don't think it's supposed to be real emotion. These people are upset not because she's dead, but because they're supposed to be upset. I mean, it's, it's you know, that, but that comes later. Like that's that's what happens later when everyone is questioning why they they aren't having emotions. Okay. That's how things work out. Like like when the one character stops by and says she was at a restaurant and the restaurant lost power for two seconds and she knew it was Alaska talking to her. That's semi-realistic. Uh, the, the brief insanity that comes with grief. Right. That, yes. Because someone in that situation does not know said character, does not know said person, does not have the emotions that are tied to losing a friend and a confidant. So you make them up. But that does not happen in the immediate wake. No. Okay. I see what you're getting at now. You know what I mean? In the immediate wake, like if I'm random student A and you're Pudge, Pudge, and that is announced, and you start flipping out, like immediately, that void of emotion becomes, I'm here for you. Yes. It does not become, I, I just like to imagine everybody put on Darth Vader masks and just Ooh. fell through their knees. No. I believe we're gonna get Tibetan monk chants now, <laughs> uh, just like pinging to our channel. Ooh. Anyway, uh, because this might be the only time that I do not lowball you. What would you rate looking for Alaska? I thought a lot about this. I really, really did. And I'm not sure that I can come to a definitive standpoint on it because there is nothing in here. It's not badly written. Okay. The writing is fairly crisp. Okay. Even if it feels like someone's got a hard on for David Foster Wallace. But there neither is there something to really cling on to so i mean i don't want to give i wouldn't give it a d i'm maybe 70 cigarettes out of 100. 70 cigarettes out of 100. i'm gonna give this 88 boone's farms you're gonna give this 88 boone's farms. yes what did you give catcher on the rye i don't recall was it a 77 that was weeks ago and i don't remember what i did 20 minutes ago that's how i work too much uh, Boone's Farm. But too much Boone's Farm. Uh, now all I can taste is Boone's Farm, and I'm regretting youth and adolescence and everything it's, that's ever happened to me. They're like alcoholic oh. Twizzlers. Oh, we, <laughs> or uh, Jolly Ranchers. We should, do a, Jolly we should Ranchers. do a Boone's Farm tag. <laughs> <laughs> because
if everybody watching this is like, oh, Boone's Farm. If you've if you've not had Night Train. Oh, the Night Train. Have you had Night Train? <laughs> no, you, we've always talked about Night Train. <laughs> uh, the, the Robitussin of the alcohol. Yeah, uh, it is, I, I'm fairly positive, they just put night train bottles down the Robitussin line, fill them up, and they're like, ah, you know, we'll slap a different we'll label on it. it. We'll fill it. We'll, we'll put a different label on there. Anyway, because we know you have, what do you think about John Green's novels? We know you've already read them. Uh, tell us what your thoughts are on what we say. Um, if you like Dalton's stance on the novel, which I'm sure most people probably do, Hit the like button. No, hit the subscribe button if you like my stance. If you disagree with Adrian, push the like button. Come on, we gotta we gotta milk if it. If you uh, if you subscribe, there will be a lot more of me trashing things that you love. Trashing Ask things. Dalton. That you, could you say maybe we'll be trashing Harry Potter soon? I don't know. I have no experience with Harry Potter. I would not have said I will trash this beforehand. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be taking Harry Potter. Um, on a weekly basis soon, probably three chapters at a time. Hopefully something like that. Um, uh, we're going to give Harry Potter the thorough breakdown it's never received. And I, I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, speaking from an Adrian heavy experience an person. An Adrian connoisseur. An Adrian connoisseur, it's going to be brutal. Uh, it might be get, it might get flagged for graphic on YouTube. Uh, so if you would like to hear Adrian talk about Harry Potter, please join us. We will be bringing that soon. It's gonna be horrid. I can just imagine all of these middle grade readers typing Harry Potter into the YouTube channel. And our video pops up. Beep, 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 uh, beep. J.K. Rowling's going to put a hit out on us. That's going to happen. <laughs> if John Green hasn't already. Uh, hit that subscribe button, guys, and we'll see you next time.